Hello everybody, this is Juntas. Today we are taking a look, a revisit look at my ultimate Javasan. So it's about one and a half year ago, maybe soon two years that I made an update to this build. Now for a lot of people you know that I love uh, a Javasan, an Amazon with a Lightning Fury build, a Charge Strike. That is just good fun for me. A lot of people also see it as one of the strongest builds in the game. Uh, and I would tend to agree with that, especially if you follow you know, my last guide that I did back in 2017, something like that. Um, I had some gear suggestions back then and I kind of finished it up. But I wanted to take a closer look now and see if I still agree with that and if I can make it even better. Also, um, I have a written guide in the description below if you're more into that. It's a very well made guide as well and I like to kind of point out that there are other options than just watching my video. But anyways, let's just get to it. So let's first take a look at stash items. It's not that needed for PVM. It's definitely more a PvP thing, but I still want to cover it. These gloves are great for increasing elemental damage. You know, a lot of people think, oh, charge strike, that's like physical damage, etc. Ah, not so much. The elemental side is just, uh, you know, <laughs> so powerful and that you don't really have to worry about uh, physical damage, which is also where something like uh, stacking attack rating with a jellic is not really needed. Uh, you could even say something like uh, getting leech, uh, mana leech and life leech is also kind of pointless on this build. I would actually go as far as say it's very pointless. Something like uh, silk weave boots, which I can just pop up on the screen right now, is actually better than getting a uh, life steal, uh, which is kind of a fun thing to note because elemental damage obviously does not leech uh, very well. So stuff like Raven Frost Ring, uh, Cat's Eye Amulet, they're not really that great to use on this build, even though we are kind of like in the scope of general Amazon gear that everyone likes to think is good. But uh, it's all about elemental damage on this one. Storm Shield Monad um, is always a good choice if you like max block uh, setups. I don't really use it for PVM, so I can't really say it's good uh, in that scenario. But max block is an excellent choice for PvP. And then I also want to kind of just mention my cheap little <laughs> socketed monarch here. Ideally this would be a J mark or something like that to get even more block. It could also be the same variation of J mark just with life and no block. Uh, that would probably be better for PVM. But um, this is the cheap option uh, so you can kind of save a little bit on the wealth. Uh, it's not really the best option but I still like to keep it around again stacking elemental damage with the gloves. Then a call to arms, a time revenge to get even more, you know, replenish uh, quantity is an issue on the Titan revenge, uh, Mage for Javel and Eve. You can always have a spare uh, <coughs> Titan's revenge uh, ready to save the day. And then a Thunderstroke here because I again like to max ma maximum damage uh, on the elemental side. So it's a fun little stash item. Also this one I had for so long and it's perfect so that's a fun little thing. Um, yeah, I could also just mention Razor Tail, Thunder Gods, Mavinas, and then I should also mention Nosferatu. Now I can just get it out of the way here. Yes, I'm still uh, using this stupid bug build. Um, without the bug build, you're obviously gonna lose some resistance. You're obviously gonna lose, um, what else could you say, 1 plus to all skillers, but that's about it. The bug build is just very good, and since I'm on year of non letter, I can utilize it. But you can easily do this build, even at a comfortable level, uh, with Razor Tail. So that's an option, uh, this bug build here on Europe non letter And I wanted to cover that, because again, this video is going to cover all these little choices here. Click House is more of a PvP item. Then I would also like to mention boot options. You could go for like Water Walkers, or other <laughs> variations of the Tri Resist Boots. But uh, I just ended up liking these ones to have been really good. They would also need like dexterity or maybe some faster heat recovery. But for the most part, uh, these are very good uh, driver's boots. And that's it for these dash items. So then, time for the gear. Definitely the most exciting part. So let's cover it in details. I am not going to show the optimal gear on my own character, unfortunately. I just don't have the wealth. But for every gear that I want to replace or I can upgrade, I will find a comparable item to what I'm describing and show it on the screen so you can kind of see what would actually be the best because, yeah, my budget is not for it since this is on live and not on here is it for a change. Anywho, let's start up with the gloves. As I talked about stash items, you can get those 320 gloves for a lot of elemental damage for cheap. But the best optimal gloves are these 220 knockback dexterity and strength gloves. 
mine have two roles that are bad. So in order to be really good, knockback and dexterity. And then these would have been, you know, maybe 10,000 FG worth or something like that. But they're still very good. And honestly, you can get these 220 gloves uh, without ads for probably, I don't know, 10 FG, maybe even like a high rune uh, online uh, easily every single day. They're definitely not a lot of worth. They just become uh, very expensive once you aim for either a knockback, uh, strain dexterity, resistance, etc. Then let's take the boots, water walker, that could actually be a decent option, but due to how resistance works without say chains of honor, uh, stuff like that, it's really hard to cap resistance on an Amazon. Even with uh, an inventory like these ones here, it's just not doable. In general, I think Trivers boots are always the best choice on all Amazon builds actually, so that's something to keep in mind. If you don't have the budget for Trivers, you could go with Tourists, that saves a lot. Uh, just aim for lightning and fire resistance, those are the two most important ones. Just a note however that uh, gloves are going to be probably the most expensive part uh, on uh, this gear selection. Boots are probably going to come in second. So that's a thing to kind of note about uh, your wealth, how much you want to pour into a few specific items just to get a small little difference. And then I want to talk a little about the inventory and faster run walk. I still keep my faster run walk grand chimes. A lot of people would say, oh, you need life to stay alive and blah, 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 and all that. But it's not true. Almost 2000 life, that is already so high that I could never <laughs> utilize it in PVM. So faster one wall grand champs, these are hard to get, not a lot of people are gonna sell them, but they make the build so much better. Anywho, yes, you can see the inventory is very simple, I get some faster hit recovery, I get some resistance and that's about it. You need to kind of work out these uh, small champs at the end when you're collected all the other uh, gears. So that is kind of something to keep in mind to round off the resistance. And the amulet of choice is always going to be Hylord's Wrath amulet. You know, I wish I had another choice. You know, you could go with a 220 amulet, like maybe get some faster run wall amulet that doesn't have faster cast rate on it, obviously. You know, get some really crazy dexterity or resist that's life, all that shit. But Highlight's Wrath is just needed because of the attack speed. That is just the sad truth, because this amulet is so boring. But it's so good in this particular case, because we need the uh, attack speed. And simply therefore it wins out on all the other options for PVM. And then here a Griffin's Diadem with a 15-15 jewel. It's important that you get the resistance as well as the increased attack speed. It just makes the resistance part that much easier to cap out. So, you know, splurge on a jewel that costs a lot, sure but it makes the build that much better. And then let's take a look at the rings here. Ideally you want something that has no attack rating, no leads and just high amounts of strain, dexterity, life and resistance. Those rings are in general called stats rings. You really don't need leads or attack rating or anything. You just want that high amount of stats as such as this one with like all resist on it and maybe even some minimum damage if you can get that, makes it that much better. But my rings are quite poor, poor for what I want. However, the rings can be a very big part in capping resistance, so keep that in mind. Gloves, boots and all that stuff at the end of the build, so you can kind of cap out and plan your resistance ahead. And then let's cover Griffin's Diadem with a 15-15 duel. It's important again that you splurge on a good duel here to get resistance and the increased attack speed as well. Besides that, there's not much more to say about Griffin's Diadem. You know, you can go with or consider a 220-30 uh, uh, helm, but it's not better. Griffin's I, I Diadem is just so much stronger. Um, it also helps a faster cast rate. And then finally, let's take a look at Phoenix and Titan's Revenge. Starting off with this Titan's Matriarch Javelin. So why pick Titan's Revenge over something like a 640 or a good Fool's uh, Javelin? Simply just because of the stats. You get so much out of Titan's Revenge that is great for PVM. You get a bit of life leech, which is good if you don't have that on other parts of your gear. It always helps a little bit for going melee. You get replenished quantity, you get faster one walk and plus two all skills in your yeah, Amazon. It's just so good. You can't really go without this one for PVM. Um, but especially just the replenished quantity is gonna help a lot. So you don't run out of quantities like every, you know, five minutes or something like that. It's very fast to run out of quantities actually. It's gonna annoy you if you run around with a 640. Uh, however, those uh, options that I talked about are more damage, raw damage for sure, 
but you lose out on quality stats that the Titans Revenge gives you. So I would never really consider them for PVM. And then Phoenix Monarch. So why Phoenix Monarch? It's just cause of the redemption aura. All the other stats I don't really care about. You know, you could say something like 52 life is decent, some fire is up, etc. But nah, no, no, none of that is really gonna help you that much. It's all about the redemption aura. Due to this Phoenix Monarch, I can pretty much just go and spam uh, Lightning Fury in a heated combat situation and never run out of mana. So let's just test this out just real fast to kind of get the point across. You can see I'm out of mana now, can only throw one spear. But it's no problem. I pretty much just wipe the floor anyways for one and I get full mana back. And then at the end of the gear selection part, I want to talk about breakpoints. Let's first start with some faster cast rate. In order to actually get some decent faster cast rate, I will have to use a 220 amulet, 10 faster cast rate rings, etc. It would just be a mess and it would be so much more costly than just using a wizard spike and a spirit's switch. No, it's a cheap ghetto fix. A lot of people would maybe say they miss out on their call to arms, but for me, I don't really need a call to arms. I mean, if I need to teleport for a longer distance, I have loads of mana for it. It's no problem with teleporting with 500 mana. And then I get an amazing amount of resistance while teleporting. You know, it's a safety setup for teleport as well. And let's just cover faster hit recovery real quick before we take increased attack speed. Due to dodge, evade, <laughs> avoid and evade skills, you don't really need faster hit recovery. It's kind of a waste to even worry about it. You could get perhaps a little bit from your inventory, such as, uh, I think I had 10 only. Yeah, I had like 10 or something, 20 maybe. You can just get that small little amount and it's fine. You don't have to worry about faster hit recovery uh, in this case, just because of those three passive abilities. Right then, let's do the attack speed. As always, you just go to the calculator, pick your class, pick your weapon, base, in this case it's a Matrix Javelin I'm using, and then you just go to your skill. In my case, since there are no abilities that are named out for me, I'm just gonna choose standard, since there's no, you know, charge strike or lightning fury in this row here. And that's it, you don't really have to do much more than these three things, and then you're just gonna hit show attack speed table. And this is kind of where you get everything you really need to know. So the characters, the Amazon, uh, it's a Matrix Javelin, the skill is standard, no increased attack speed, I added that in myself for nothing. And that's it. So I know that I either need 95 or 50 increased attack speed to reach the breakpoint that I desire. So how can I get 95% increased attack speed, or even just 50? It's pretty simple. You don't. You don't get 95. <laughs> In order to actually get 95% increased attack speed, I think you would have to do 20 on the gloves, maybe 10 on the belt. Definitely a socketed chest. You, you, you can't use Chains of Honor or Enigma. Then I think you would have to do maybe a socketed uh, shield as well, or either a socketed armor, or definitely a, like a storm shield with a 15% increased attack speed on it. And that would probably reach uh, 95, 90 increased attack speed. You lose out an Enigma or a good shield. That's basically the sacrifice in order to get faster increased attack speed. For PvP, that would probably be worth it, definitely. But for PvM, no way. So for the ultimate PvM build, we are gonna aim at 50 or 55% increased attack speed. In this case, it's gonna be 20 from the gloves, 20 from the amulet, and then because of the duel here, important this is the right duel you get, 15% increase, increase attack speed from this one as well, which gives me 55, and that is perfect. That's all I want for PVM. I make too much sacrifices else if I wanna reach higher. And that's pretty much it for the breakpoints. Let's real fast also just cover the Infinity Mercy channel. Obviously we're going with a cryptic axe, it's a nice fast base and you want to have a fast uh, weapon in this case to proc a uh, crushing blow. You would e I would even say the best base would probably be like a fresher uh, if you can get that. Cryptic axes are a little more available and that is what I went with. And then an increased attack speed duel in the end hours we sage and a fortitude eve. It's such a standard setup but it just works brilliantly together. So then, are you tired of me talking yet? <laughs> Sorry for all the rambling, but luckily the skills here are pretty fast to go through. So nothing in bow and crossbow skills. Passive and magic are very easy as well. You just take one point into everything or leave out the two rows here. You know, you don't really need evade, uh, avoid, uh, dodge, etc. You don't need Valkyrie, decoy and so forth either. It's up to yourself how you kind of want to run it. 
you know, if, if you're going to play like a player's eight games mostly, I would think a good strong Valkyrie and maybe a decoy would come in handy. But yeah, besides that, I'm not really sure if it's really needed uh, if you're just going to toy around solo, or etc. And then, yes, you probably just mention real fast, uh, if you for some reason are going perhaps more melee, you kind of using more charge strike, more points into critical strike wouldn't be the worst thing, but since you already do use Hylot's Wrath and one point is plenty with all the plus skills, it's enough really. And then Pierce here, this is totally optional, up to yourself we rather want to you know, put as many points into as you can if you're using another build than uh, Razor Tail, uh, stuff like that. It's kind of up to yourself how many points you want to get it into, uh, but since I'm using Razor Tail as the main build, uh, I'm just gonna put one point into Pierce. And then the Javelin and Spear skills, obviously since we are a Lightning Fury Javasan, it's always such a critical point we're getting all the synergies, it just makes the damage that much higher. But this also means that I'm using all points in just one tree, pretty much. You really just want to max Lightning Fury and Charge Strike and then put all the synergies into however much you like. You know, I'm not able to finish off Power Strike, even at, if you're going to level at level 99 and you didn't take any points into, you know, this whole tree here. It still wouldn't be enough to get all the synergy points, but it would be close. So yeah, that's just a little thing I wanted to mention for those who would seek, you know, the maximum elemental damage. Maybe even using, you know, the, the socketed shield here, which I talked about, or the gloves. Uh, maybe something like Thunderstroke, Meteorite Javelin, etc. So then let's just do some quick gameplay. You know, everyone kind of knows what this is going to be like. Chart Strike, uh, Jab as my uh, left bind. And then on here I have E as for decoy, lightning fury on R and teleport on T. And then switch I always use A, just like that bind because it's close to Q, whatever, on the keyboard. And yeah, if you need to teleport for a longer distance you can easily do that. You now just look at my mana. It's such a good PVM uh, you know, rotation using these two items on switch. And again you don't need call to arms for PVM with this gear level. It would be something else if I only had like you know, 700 health or whatever. Then call to arms would be a big health uh, boost to my survival. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I love uh, Wizard Spike and Spirit on switch. It's so good. I also use it, uh, this particular setup on other builds like my Whirlwind Barbarian. You could utilize decoy once in a while, but I don't really like the ability. It just seems kind of gimmicky. Even on players 5, I would have to go more melee, and then on players 8 before I would start using it in the rotation more. Another thing is also, if you were actually going to play this on players 8, whatever, you know, boosting people in Karas runs or something like that, uh, you would probably have to go more melee with something like... Yeah, then you would have to consider other options, maybe not even... Uh, you know, something uh, more melee or intended just to kind of boost the uh, charge strike, uh, you know, damage more. You could even go with something like Gore Riders to stack crushing blow more. That would be an option. Some people probably say this is a boring build because it's so simple. You know, there's not really many buttons to use. Honestly, there are, are no buttons to use, but like one or two, uh, maybe three abilities. But this also makes it more enjoyable. You know, I can focus on positioning. I can focus more on the gameplay. Um, yeah, that's just kind of how I like it. Wave 2. Wave 3. Wave 4. Wave 5. So this is a lightning immune that I cannot break uh, by myself with infinity, but it's no problem since the mercy chain is so strong in general with uh, this setup. And then just a fun little chat strike test. You know, you can pretty much just murder Diablo in like 5 hits. It's always this fast, even like on players 8, this build is probably the highest single target damage uh, of any build. Next to maybe like a sealed sorceress or a bear sorceress. A static ability, that ability is pretty crazy as well on bosses, so it might be you know, the second highest single target damage in that case. But that's pretty much it. Don't want to make the guide that much longer <laughs> as I tend to say in these videos when they ran for too long. But yeah, this is the ultimate PVM Yamazon. You know, a lot of people have done guides for this uh, this particular build here. Uh, Extimus uh, also did one kind of recently, I guess, a year ago or whatever. Uh, even uh, a few others, if you just kind of search for it in YouTube. 
it's a standard build, but I like uh, min max and these standard builds. Kind of see how fast you can push them. Um, a lot of people also tend to kind of do a few mistakes uh, when they make. Uh, you know, I get a little triggered by that when I see a few mistakes. And if you see mistakes in this guy, definitely tell me because the point of this video was basically just to kind of give you the optimal, the best PVM you have. So and also judging from the title I will choose. Uh, I don't want to, you know, have any mistakes in this guy here. This was the best PVM you ever saw that you can make, period. You're not going to get a better gear set out than the one I talked about now. I uh, am pretty definitely sure about that. But again, if you were triggered by this video because you actually found a mistake, do please tell me now because... Uh, I kind of want to make more of these videos if people find them interesting as well because it's always fun to kind of explore the highest, the best, the greatest and all that shit. Uh, I find that fun, uh, which a lot of people probably know by now. Anywho, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching and as always, have a good one.